when the cycle will it's like it's when the cycle starts again will it will of me like not not partaking in a good manner like i will look back on this time in yearning and like i'll always be like man that was like that was like why did i spoil that like why did i do that you know like why did i let that go and then like when i'm in the thick of like a not fasting season i'm always just like i can't imagine fasting again like i don't know it's like i was reading someone the other day and i don't remember who it was but it was some saint and um there was a saint who said like the heart is so fickle it just changes with like everything like every little shade of light ever it just changes So hello, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and tonight I'm going to ask Father Turbo and Cyprian, do you guys have a favorite Christmas movie? And if you don't, I have a backup question. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. A Christmas okay. story. Oh, okay. The Red Rider BB gun. Sure. You'll shoot your eye out. Yeah. Fragile. Oh, yeah. Fragile. Oh, yeah. I think it's Fragile. Yeah. Fragile. The lamp. Yeah. The lamp. Yeah. I mean, I that I don't know how you could beat. I don't know how you could beat that. That's my favorite. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's not my favorite. I haven't watched it in a while, but I remember watching it a couple times and being like, I can see why this is a cult classic. But I, it's one of those movies. I think by the time I saw it, it had been quoted to death. Where I was like, oh, oh yeah, 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 I see that. It's like if you were to watch Monty Python and Search for the Holy Grail now. You're like, yeah, yeah. it's all quoted to death. Like, I know all of this stuff. It's not that. Well, I'm pretty sure. I think it came out when I was actually a kid. So I think it's an I think it's an 80s movie, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it's an 80s movie. Right? Christmas yeah, Story. I don't know. So, really don't know. yeah, it, it was it was new when I was a kid. And it's just the nostalgia. The sure. nostalgia is there for sure. sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, It is for me. It's. I think the one that I love the most would probably be the the Peanuts Christmas special. It's like oh, yeah. overtly it's overtly Christian. Uh mm -hmm. it's like Charlie Brown is struggling with what Christmas is and he mm -hmm. doesn't feel the joy and then Linus is just like let me break it down for you. And he's like everything that you're doing is vapid. It's about Christ. And I'm just like I can get behind that. But from like, if we're going purely entertainment, it's Home Alone. Home Alone oh, is well, that's gonna be a top. Yeah, that's Home Alone is fantastic. Sure. It's a great movie. It's like mm -hmm. my wife watched it last year for the first time and like bawled because she was like, yeah. "The mom did everything just to get home to her baby," and I was just yeah. like, "Yeah, it's great. It's a great movie." Mm -hmm. And then John Candy when he's like Polka Polka Polka, you know, <laughs> West, you know. <laughs> Polka King of the Midwest, like I mean, like that whole scene is, and she's like, "I'm sorry, can you help me?" And he's like, "Oh, right, right, right." Like it's, <laughs> it's like hilarious, and yeah. What about you, Father? A Christmas Carol with George C. Scott. Oh yeah, that yeah. is, yeah. Megan and I were talking about Christmas Carol this morning. I was like, that part where he comes out and he's like, "It's not too late." I was like, oh, my gosh, that is repentance. He's like, it's not too late. I was just like, I love that movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it makes me think, you know, up there of a of a good just because I love Bill Murray is Scrooge. Scrooge is really good, too. I think it's a really great comedy. Mm -hmm. But Bill Murray's always great. Yeah, he's always great. Except in Life Aquatic. Right, father? <laughs> wow. Really? You didn't <laughs> like that? You know, I like Life that? Aquatic. I like it. I like it. I'm like the only one who doesn't, you know? Yeah. Are you not a Wes Anderson fan? I general? don't think so. I don't think no. I am. Yeah. It's not very I think you just got to know. You it, you just got to be like, it's a Wes Anderson. You can't approach it like, I'm going to watch a, a movie. 
mm-hmm. you got to approach it like I'm going to watch a Wes Anderson movie. Yeah. yeah. Father, oh, have no. you seen Grand Budapest Hotel? Oh, never even heard of it. That's my favorite. It's a that is a it's the best. Just, I I don't know if it's his best personally. I'm just I'm the guy like eating popcorn, just like eating, like loving the simple movie. It's but Fantastic movie. Mr. Fox is his best movie. Did he do not? Did he do Rushmore? Uh, Rushmore is his second best movie. Mm-hmm. Rushmore mm-hmm. is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like best part of Grand Budapest think- Hotel. I think that's one of the closest ways I, I think um, that's one of those things I, I I kind of like defer to, to be like, how do I build empathy for an autistic person? Mm. <laughs> because I don't like Wes Anderson. Everyone's like, I love it. He's, he's the best. Wes Anderson movies. And I'm like. It might be a generational. Well, no, because you and Cyprian are about the same age. So yeah, uh-uh. maybe it's, it's just, it's just, it's like, it's, there's something wrong with my hard wiring. I don't. I don't get it. It's... Well, it's absurd. Like it's a so it's theater of the absurd, right? So it he's, is. He's, he's he's it's absurdity, and I think that it's well, I, I, it's like Monty Python, right? So it's kind of like you got it. You just gotta approach it, being like, okay, this is gonna be absurd. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's absurd in like a very. It's it's almost. It's really trying hard to be charming. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, recognizing that it's trying hard to be charming, mm-hmm. which is, I think, like, that's the there's just I don't know it. I think if there I was vibe with one, it. I vibe with it. I think if there was one you would like, I think it is legitimately Grand Budapest Hotel. It's really good. It's it's it got some like a real emotional depth to it. It's, what about Bob Wes Anderson? No, no, no. But I've actually it's funny because I hadn't thought about what about Bob in a couple months or no been a couple years but within this last month i was like dealing with this person who's kind of difficult but i do trust them spiritually and i was kind of like because it seemed like everything i was doing was like wrong and it's like i still it's still not right but i was like dealing and i felt like i was bob where he like straps him to the chair with the bomb and he's like i see i have to like un but really the person's just being malicious to me But I'm like, I'm like strapping, I'm like taking off the ropes. I'm like, oh, I see. I have to like undo the emotional bonds. I barricade and like this bomb. It's the thing that like needs to like change in my life. And I'm like, but really the person's just being kind of malicious to me. It's like, oh, okay, well then, I mean, but um, no, he didn't do What About Bob, but uh, Grand Buddha. great film though. uh, What About Bob is another great movie. Oh, so good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I think I it before he had been like movie. typecast as the old drunk depressed dude because right. he was just like the neurotic like um, whatever. So yeah, yeah. but yeah, if there's one you would like, I think it would be Grand Budapest Hotel and then yeah, he has a certain sense of humor. Wes Anderson that not a lot of people mm-hmm. vibe with. I personally think it's generally pretty funny. I, I generally, I don't like like all of his stuff. So I don't know. I, Everyone I know loves him. I guess that's what I mean by like my that's where I can kind of find some connection with being autistic. You know, it's like I don't get it. I don't make it. <laughs> just <laughs> there's lots of stuff, and I think we've talked about this before, but there's lots of stuff that everyone just loves. I'm just like, I don't get it. I just really, really don't get it. Okay, nothing comes to mind right now, but yeah, there's lots of stuff that everyone just is gaga for. And I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, we don't have to get into it, but you know, the Mandalorian, the first season. Like, I was like a huge Star Wars fan. And I was like, I don't know what everyone's flipping out about. Are you it's, kidding me? It's like this is cool. I like it, but it's like it's just a Boba Fett ripoff with an IG eighty eight ripoff. I mean, oh, so we'll so stop sad. there because I don't want to isolate. So I don't want to drive dude. anyone away. I like it. We just lost half of. We just lost half of our whatever. Right there. <laughs> separating the chaff from the wheat. Like I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> um, but like it's good. I liked it, but everyone was like, it's the best thing ever. I'm like, I think it's cool. But like the part at the end where IG80 like steps into the lava and everyone's like crying. I'm like, it's a droid. Like it's not a big deal. He sacrificed whatever. Anyway, we're done. We're done. We're done. Um, do you any of you guys do we got a topic? Well, uh, on the this was a question that I had, and maybe we could because it's been something that's going on and you kind of you touched on a little bit with the what about Bob reference. Um, and it's about father. It's something we haven't talked about in a while, but it's been going on in my life about 
praying for God to close doors. Mm. And I've really, I mean, that's been maybe one of the most powerful aspects of my prayer life because I really, because really this question about praying for God, praying that God's will be done, I would always have, and I, it's not, I would, I do always have a very difficult time genuinely praying for that in my heart when there's something that I feel that I need, mm-hmm. right? That like, I'm, I'm going to God with like, Oh, may your will be done. But like in the back of my mind, which is maybe not the back of my mind still there. I'm like, but you know, but still, could you kind of, you know, do this thing? Whereas I feel that I could much more genuinely pray in a very genuine way. Like, please close the doors that aren't supposed to be open. Like, please do that. Let me see. And it it's happened enough times that like those doors have been closed. But one thing that I I wanted to talk with you about is I've I've been having I, I I've been having sort of a recent pattern of like praying about that and then doors not being necessarily like closed on an entire thing but like it's turned out to be people Mm. like doors being closed on people and like so i wanted to talk about discernment like your connection to them or things in their life Mm -hmm. yes and like maybe this is not the right person and then as soon as i have accepted that like oh yeah i'm not supposed to be dealing with this person it turns out that like oh it's actually somebody over here that I'm supposed to be dealing with. And it's not like a door that's being closed, but it's like a door on a person. And sort of one of the things that I've been interested to discern is like, what is the, what is the point at which, or, or how do we approach a situation of like walking away from a person as opposed to saying, oh, I need to still engage with this person to spread the gospel, show an orthodox life, whatever this is. Do you kind of understand where, where I'm, where I'm going so. with this? Like, so. how, like where, where the, like, the need what? to event to, to the need to spread the gospel interacts with toxicity. Maybe, I mean, to use a like modern phrase. Yeah. Um, hmm. So, uh, all of this has to do with, um, there's like this, uh, if you can see our lives as like, um, I've seen these things before. Like, have you ever seen those rings that spin with a ring that spins within a ring? Oh, like a gyroscope, kind of? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Like, imagine, like, because it, this has to do in part with, we've talked about this before, Kronos versus Kairos, right? Like, chronological time versus window of opportunity. Mm-hmm. And so, like, things are spinning, and certain things need to line up in a certain way because our development of where we're at in regards to our relation to Christ and our relation to Christ isn't just about our understanding in a kind of forensic sense, but our relation to Christ in the sense that you can't separate your relation to Christ from being a husband, being a father, being a brother, right? nor can you separate that from your own chronological experience. Meaning here's the time of your birth. Here's the time of you meeting Christ. There's your time of your death. So all these things are, are at, are at play, but also within that there is the Kairos in regards of like a window of opportunity that may close and, and open at seemingly random intervals. You don't really know, but it's like this perfect timing, you know, and so God's taking all those into account. And the reason why I, I want to frame it that way is because if we think it's just like contingent upon one thing, 
then what you're really looking for, you're not going to get the answer to. Because what you're, I could be wrong, but I think what you're trying to understand is like, how should you be either understanding, I guess, understanding all this, right? Understanding this particular, why it's moving this way. And so, for instance, there's, there's the kind of like real fuzzy, abstract, thousand foot view. Let me drill down a little bit. And, you know, there's this thing where, you know, giving quote unquote, like, like the gospel, right? Okay. Like, what do we, what do we mean? What are we talking about? And I think that <clears throat> for some people, <clears throat> excuse me, who do have the gift of evangelism or the vocation of evangelism, um, you know, they, there's a, a, a pull to be more explicit and that looks more like preaching in a more kind of explicit overt way. Most people, and I do mean most people, the way that we evangelize is by living a, a, an orthodox life, which includes having devotion to Christ, right? So for a lot of people, it's actually what you're not going to do is going to be your evangelism more than what you're going to do. You'll say more to someone about Christ by not participating in certain jokes or conversations. You'll be saying more about Christ by not participating in certain gray behavior that everyone kind of participates in, especially all the other Christians, you know? Um, that's the majority of people, how it's going to play out. Um, I, you know, I, I would just submit, humbly speaking, very few people will, will have the pull and the call to be kind of like preaching at people like vocationally, right? And if you do, you'll begin to recognize there's even seasons where that may not be the case, not just with you, but even with people and, and how you're interacting with them. So mm -hmm. I think that, you know, it's, it's one of those things. If, if my life was worth anything in the sense of my life in Christ, meaning if I've, if I've, if I have some things to say, I think one one of the things I would really kind of like point to people is if you if we can really learn to just cons consistently watch out for wanting to make the system like there is no system. What do, what do you mean by that? Make yeah, I was going to say. Um, you know, when people ask, like, I've had this, I've had this happen a lot where people ask me questions about this, this, and that, and I know, I know because of my own idiosyncrasies and things like that, not giving a satisfying answer. But the bigger reason why I often can't give a satisfying answer is because not only do I, am I not pro system, I'm actually, I, I find them be, to be problematic in the spiritual life, meaning this is how you do this X, Y, and Z. And if you learn the system, if you just get down this and that, it'll always work out that way. And it just, it doesn't, it just, it, and not only does it not work out that way, it's detrimental. That's why you have to have the ethos. You have to have the ethos. And once you have the ethos, then that leaves you with the potential to, with, with potential, period. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because ethos allows you to now not meditate on what you're going to say in that day when they bring you before the synagogues, the courts, and the judges. But in that day, know the Holy Spirit give you, you know, every utterance. That's how, that's how you live that. But if you have a system of like, well, personality type A plugs into situation B and then like, you know what I mean? Or even like for yourself, you know, whatever you think it is, it's just you, you, you really, I have found from my own experience, you really don't know. Because I'll be honest with you, I don't even, <clears throat> believe it or not, I don't even do that with my own spiritual children and my, you know, meaning people I confess and counsel i don't do that with them either you know i have the don't get me wrong there's a general sense of knowing someone sure but every time like i hear someone's confession every time i i interacting i mean you i don't know 
you know, believe me or not, it doesn't really matter. But even when I interact with my own biological children, my wife, it's like I learned something a long time ago. Like, for better or for worse, human beings are kind of getting back to something Andrew's saying. Like, we're not static. Even, even, it, even if that's a bad thing, even if we want to be, like, we're fickle. We're always changing. I mean, that's one of the big distinctions between us and the angels, right? The angels don't change. We change. We fluctuate. We vacillate. And so I've just, I really strive, and that's to, to really, you know, because that's, I mean, that's my life, knowing God, knowing others, right? And so in order for me to know God and to know others, I need to be aware of that we're not static. God doesn't change. Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, forever. But I change. I vacillate. So I need to be aware of that. You vacillate, Cyprian. Andrew vacillates. Papadia vacillates. We change for better, for worse. And so I will have interpersonal problems with you if I don't keep that in account. Hmm. If you, it's like you go to them, are you saying that like you'll have a problem with someone if you go to them and kind of expecting them to be the same person every time? Okay, mm-hmm. I got you. And so, to give them a rigid system, right? Mm-hmm. To be like, do this. It seems to me like there's so many things where, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to relate this to the things that I have some competence and experience with, but it's like, I feel like there's definitely the same sort of idea in like the, fitness or athletics or all of these things where it's like, like I'm thinking baseball, right? Like I'm thinking like a a batting stance, Mm -hmm. you know, there's as many batting stances as there are players and there's home run hitter sluggers who have completely different, I mean, wildly different stances where one would work for one and it doesn't for the other. So it's very difficult to say, okay, here's a stance, do that. But it's very easy to say all of these people would agree, I think on the things that you don't do. Mm-hmm. it's like i'm not going to tell you what your stance should be mm-hmm. you're going to have to learn that but mm-hmm. i can absolutely tell you what not to do that's and that's why closed doors way. that's why closed right. doors is is the way because right. when you say i know what like <clears throat> i know what won't work because because when you once you say that then you're actually you're opening up to actual potential because the other way is a perceived potential, but it's not because the, the, uh, the, uh, the appearance or the impression or the suggestion of potential is part of the problem. It's not, first of all, it's not real and where it, where it feels real, where it feels valid is where we get, you know, distracted and where we get paralyzed and where we get get stuck. And how about addicted? I feel like and it's addicted, also the yeah. beginning of addiction is this delusion toward, oh, no, I can do this thing and still like be successful and all of this. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, it, that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. I can tell you right now, if you start down this path, it's not mm-hmm. going to work. It's not going to work. There's, there's no potential like, oh, no, I could handle it. I'm different. Yeah, I mean, like, no. It- you can't. And, and I think, you know, the, the, the complimentary portion to this is that and I was just speaking with a brother about this today. It's like with prayer, you know, something's working, stick with it because it's not always going to work. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Cause it's not, it's not always going to work. And so the thing is, is like just part of the way this all plays out, what I'm sharing with is it, it, these are all facets from my perspective. When I'm about to, what I'm talking about here, like they're all facets of, of the jewel of communion and being present, right? So it's like you you learn certain principles, you learn certain things that you know, you know, in an apophatic way. Let's say, you know, what I mean, like what, like knowing what to do by knowing what not to do. If, if that makes sense, you mm-hmm. know, it's a very, it's, it's a very appropriate and valid way of going about things. Some people might say that like, it's too maddening, like who has time to do that, but it's just like anything else. It's like, if you, if you understand it and you begin to experience it, then you begin to practice it. Once you begin to practice it, you begin to have it and adopt it as your, 
your kind of paradigm, you know, and it's a great way to get onto the road of discerning because I think another problem we have is we think, you know, we're, we, we have this tendency to want to be autonomous. We think, mm-hmm. <laughs> we think discernment means I know something in of myself. That's not what discern, that's not how you, that's not how someone gets discernment. You know what discernment is? Discernment is your electrodes or your electrodes, your connecting points, you know, are clear, are cleaned off. That's what discernment is. Like the electrodes of your of your noose are like they got the fine fine sand pa- fine sandpaper grit has like worn them worn all the rust and the crud off and the connection's quick and good. You got a clean connection. That's what discernment is. And a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people think discernment is something that you wield in of yourself. Right? You don't true discernment isn't isn't wielded in of yourself. So can I ask? Oh, that's wow. That's that. a, that's an important concept right there. So if you were say if your noose were your electrodes were cleaned off, and your noose were like had given the jolt, you know, and you're like, okay, it's kind of breathing back to life and everything like that, and something were to hit you wrong, is that like? I'm not getting too specific because again, we're not talking about like like role playing magic rules or anything um or like you know talking lore or whatever it's like what does that look like like what does that feel like i mean without getting too like specific like it does it just kind of like sit wrong with you is it like a weird feeling do you know what i mean and you're asking if something's off something's wrong well yeah so am i looking if i'm if if my discernment if my spidey sense is going off Is this like, is this like, I don't want to approach this from a perspective of like new age where it's like, oh, it's a feeling, you know, or if it's like, or is it like, um, well, but it is a feeling, right? I was going to say, let's be clear about something. You know, I talk a lot about feelings, but like, you know, feelings are there for a reason. And when I, when I'm, when I'm, you know, kind of railing against feelings, I'm railing against feelings in the sense of, sentiment sentimentality right yeah sentimentality but also too that people's uh, people are busted people are broken so people can't trust their feelings you know part of the thing is like you can with god's help something that i think is very valid is to want to get to a place where you can trust your feelings in the sense that you you've come to a place of greater healing and maturity repentance humility and that your feelings are in the proper order of things they don't lead the way i think that's what i'm kind of trying to get to is is like is there a point at which you can kind of start to trust when something feels off when you're like uh i don't because that's that's one of the ways that like yeah, I but to... yes i think what we i think what we i i i'll use a term let's call it the gut <laughs> all right mm-hmm. so it's like this is where it gets tough because if you don't have this experience, it's hard to, it's like, how do you explain this one? But it's like, you go somewhere and your gut says, I shouldn't be here. I know this feeling. Yeah, I know. Right? That. I know this feeling. And, and I just had this conversation with someone not too long ago. It was just like, well, you better start trusting your gut because every time you don't trust your gut, something wrong happens. And, and it's, that's very true. And I, you know, I think that, um, yes, I just think that we, God has not left us, you know, blind in that sense, you mm-hmm. know? Um, but the problem is, is everything's so disordered and people, <clears throat> people actually blind themselves often. Because they're not sober. Because they're not sober. But also, too, if this makes sense to you, um, people can become, people can blunt their senses Mm -hmm. by chasing after experience. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so, um, forgive me for going there, you know, um, I apologize if this offends anyone, but it's, it's the same thing when a person 
why it's so insidious, you know, a person begins to get into, you know, adult entertainment Mm -hmm. and they just, you know, they end up getting into very perverse things. How does that happen? Because their, their senses, you know, become so blunted that they need to have something more and more shocking Mm. to, to, to stimulate them. So there's people who, this is, this is one of the things, like, I've talked about this before. I think, I don't know if we talked about this here, but, you know, for a very small select people, I'll probably get my card pulled on this one, but very, very small select people, like, horror movies can have a, can have somewhat of a beneficial effect, but that that amount of people is negligible, I have found. Yeah. It's negligible. And, and you shouldn't test it. You shouldn't test it. <laughs> right, but, but you're I probably just, not in the small. You know? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just so why am I bringing this up? Because horror movies are a great example of of, of what I'm talking about. Where there's people who they're horror movie fans and they blunted themselves right, and right. and it causes problems for them, pretty pretty significant problems for them spiritually. How could it not? Like I don't like I don't know the last time I watched one, and I've never been into them. But the last time I watched one, I was like, this has genuinely disturbed me. Like this is going to take a couple days to get over. Mm-hmm. And if you're not feeling that, you're like you've numbed yourself to this like insane level. Or you're cha- why would you chase being disturbed? Like it's like not like a beneficial disturbed. I'm not like I'm not like well because because you've desensitized yourself. You know, like there was a certain part in my life that that was really. I mean, this thing about the gut is so interesting. If I think about, you know, when I had fall, what the the period of my life where I fell into you know just this the the bottomless pit. I look at the beginning, and. My gut was constantly telling me, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Like constantly. Mm-hmm. And like you say, I, I had, I had, it, it wasn't that I was necessarily ignoring it, but that I was, I had, I don't, and I don't know how this had come about. Maybe because I, I had an intellectual desire for a certain thing. And I think that this happens with a lot of people. I, <laughs> I see it in the world of investing so often. Right. Mm -hmm. Where people have this intellectual desire of this fantasy that they've made in their head of who they're going to be when they're rich and who they're going to be when it's all of these things. And it's like they'll walk into a scam and they'll get scammed. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is how you get scammed. This is how you get grifted. So Mm -hmm. and they'll always say, like, you know, something told me not to do Mm -hmm. it. Everything about it was saying, don't do it. But man, I did it anyway, because I had made this whole fantasy in my head about how I was going to be rich and all the good things. It's always all the good things that you were going to do for people once X, Y, Z happened. Right. Which is a lie. Right. Because it's all it's all about ego. But I think that if I look towards the end, like. For me, it is this is really resonating so well with me, Father, because I'm trying to get, and I've referenced it here on on even when we've talked on previous shows, like I'm trying to recover my gut. Yeah, can I you say know? something simple? Forgive Please. me. It, it's gonna be like everything you're saying is really good. Please, but I don't want you to think I'm jumping tracks out of. I just want to just kind of throw this out there for people to consider. Um, I think that people should seriously consider the fact that so much of our society and our culture has been intentionally, unintentionally, however you want to look at it, I lean towards the former, um, geared in such a way to help blunt that for people. And the reason why I'm saying this is because with the way we're headed now and actually with where we're at right now, the only people who are going to like, the only way to discern now is through that. You're saying is by having your gut intact. Deep yeah. fakes, yeah. deep yeah. fakes, yeah. Yeah. Um, AI. I mean, like, like 
just let's just say because everyone kind of gets it, whatever. And if not, if we need to unpack it for maybe people who are new, whatever. But the Antichrist spirit and what that means, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And we're not talking in the like kind of chick track way, right? Um, the the high level, sophisticated, like you really can't even believe how like the disinformation is part of the problem. Like that level of stuff. How do you discern? You can't discern by trusting your eyes. No. You can't just somebody trust your eyes. Like the other day, Nikolai showed me this, like uh, some of this new AI tech where it's just like literally taking the picture and you can just, you know, move. And I mean, and that's just what we can have access now. It's just Mm -hmm. things are so, and we've been talking about it, right? But now we're, we're here where we're in it fully in it we're 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 in it and so mm-hmm. how are you going how are you going to discern and this has been the running thread for our project right is mm-hmm. that we are in a time now where it's like it's just it's it's funny to me i i think some of some of the audience whatever will really kind of resonate that it's like um I, like tim pool Tim Cast is that his, mm-hmm. Tim okay. Cast IRL. So what was it last week? It's like one of the few Tim Cast I've watched all the way through. Um, where they had uh, was it Donnie Darkin and um, they had they're basically had I can't remember it was Donnie Darkin and some other cats who um, they were talking about like. What's your boy's name? Trump being the Antichrist, potentially. Mm-hmm. Did you see that one? Did you watch no. that? No, but I don't I, I I don't feel like Trump is the Antichrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. It's worth watching because okay. it's almost doesn't matter. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know what I mean? right, 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 it, right, it, right, it, right. It almost right, yeah. it almost it almost doesn't matter. Father, um, do you mean the fact that they're even having a conversation that's about my the point. Antichrist? Right? That's my point. <laughs> right. that, that's that that they're sort of implicitly acknowledging the antichrist is walking on that's Earth at this point <laughs> that is my whole right okay. that is everything i'm trying to say mm-hmm. that you have one of the most popular definitely would that be considered alt media if not kind oh, of for like, sure what well, og alt media like yeah. og alt media but like it's getting to that place where it's in that liminal space of almost kind of being mainstream because yep. it's 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 picking up Mm-hmm. And they're having a full blown conversation about the Antichrist. And it was wild because, thank you so much. It was wild because I was with the sisters and we were just kind of like going back and forth on this thing. And not to be that guy, but I was like, yeah, I mean, I was just kind of breaking some stuff down for them. And literally, it was like, like 15 minutes later they're saying they're saying what i was the saying thing. You're right and that and that kind of blew me away and it gave me some hope right mm-hmm. it gave me some hope because like i was just i had brought to the sisters i started talking about alan moore and yeah, chaos yeah. magic yeah, yeah, yeah. right mm-hmm. and he just like 15 minutes later he brought it up and i was like mm-hmm. okay like mm-hmm. good right but this is this is the thing is that's been in play Right. But but as it becomes more and more exposed, the, the sword cuts both ways. And, and so this is what I'm trying to say is like, I think this is why this is important is because let's shift now. And those who don't understand now, they can kind of like get some proper definitions. What we're really tra- what we're really talking about now, though, is the noose. Yeah. And so it's about having the 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 crud that's darkening your noose with God's help, you know, gradually removed. Cause, cause we say gut here for the sake of, you know, all the people, which hopefully there's still lots of people that aren't in the church yet that are watching us, whatever I, I'm hoping. Right. Or those who are just kind of coming in and they're learning. Right. But what, what we say we're talking about is the noose and Father. that's what needs to be, honed now because you are not like especially if you're the guy who is spending all your time on x and everything else and you think you know all the conspiracy theories 
you are the guy who you need to get you need to get your your noose honed right because you think you thinking that you know all the theories and all the whatever you are even more primed to be deceived real uh, i can't wait just for whatever for the people who maybe aren't in the church and who are listening the noose the spiritual organ by which we interact with god yeah just a quick definite yeah yeah, a great, a great, a working definition that I like when you read the fathers, read other things, it can be confusing because there's terms that kind of like overlap. But I, I try to teach everyone, just think of it as the eye of the soul, the eye of the heart. If you, it's the thing that helps you to see and to, to see and experience God and the things of God. Let's just put it that way. And when it's commun, when, when you're the, the visceral experience that you're having, because it, it is because it's because correct me if I'm wrong here, Father, it is sort of the connection between the physical, uh, the physical body and having a kind of a physio. It's like a pseudo this. I, I don't want to say this wrong, but it, it has a physical aspect to it. Well, the and a spiritual is, is, aspect to it. Well, what it is, is the best way to understand this is that using plastics, but according to many. Sorry, yeah. sorry. I checked on something in my phone and a video popped up. The, <laughs> the, 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 the best way to understand this is like, let's not go there. Let's look, let's define it this way. Okay. You've been t- like what we've been taught in regards of, di- of a dichotomy between the, the material and the spiritual. That's the problem. Right, right, right. So that, that's the problem. Right. And the news, when it's clear, it kind of deals with that dichotomy. And we'll, but we'll have this physical sensation that we all know that we talk about trust your gut. This is the sense of the noose. We're having a sense of activity of the noose. It's, I would say it isn't, but it's, it's a closer, like if you get that sense, that's what's one of the few things to kind of get you on track. Another one is, um, I've talked about this before. You are driving to work your, you know, hour and 45 commute that you drive every day for the last three years. And, you know, you've gotten home and you're like, I don't even know how I got here because flow. you were thinking. Yeah. Flow. Yeah. yeah. You were, well, you were thinking about your sick, your right. sick daughter or your like your brother who's in trouble. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that part of you that was thinking about your sick brother the whole time. Mm-hmm. You're starting to approximate it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and then it changes for those who are in the church and those who are, you know, pursuing prayer and things like that. It, it, it develops and it changes, but just on a general sense to make it like applicable for everybody. Those are kind of experiences that I think can help approximate what we're talking about. Cause it's, it's not tangible in the sense of like, right how people would think tangible, like, you know, I'm having a heart attack, but it's also not just ethereal completely. Like there's, mm-hmm. it's, it's within the being of the person. Mm-hmm. And Is it's that, undeniable. There's something undeniable. occurring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's something yeah. occurring. I think that that's the, that's the, that's the, and that you can lose it. And I mean, I know it can be darkened. Yeah, dark, darkened. It can be darkened, and it can be you know blunted. Um, mm-hmm. And so the question then, of course, you know, just to cut off all the people, like, well, how do you, how do you hone it? How you find it? Well, you know, I don't know. There's going to be someone who's going to disagree with me. But that's totally fine. But you like through the life in the church through the sacraments which unite us to Christ, that's the way in which you completely begin to open, acknowledge it, clean it, and all that stuff. And then through, excuse me, our tradition is geared in such a way that the sacramental life facilitates the cleaning of it, right? Because in order to engage in the sacraments, there's prayer, there's fasting, all these things, right? So the life in the church is the thing that opens and cleanses the noose to a greater or lesser degree. Um. And that's where like prayer and like silence, Hesekiah and like all those things, like all those things really do come into play. And then, you know, you got these people. I almost want to start like an internet beef with this guy. (laughs) 
His name's he's a <laughs> he's a plant. His name's like Robin something something. Okay. He's on he's on a certain he's on a certain um old belief radio system. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> where where do you know this guy from? From that radio from, from that, that radio, old belief radio old system. Belief radio oh, system. Okay. All right. <laughs> and uh he like blogs and stuff. I don't know what they're thinking having this having this guy on there, man, but he's you know, he's definitely these guys he's writ he's written this stuff and like I don't know, people want to offend him, but he's right he's written this stuff like the noose and like all these you know this is all just a bunch of you know byzantine trickery and all this stuff and i'm just oh. like man okay. yeah, i'm like this guy you know um you know he was also somebody who was very pro um injected stuff all this so uh, it's just, well of course because he's got no because he's got his noose is dark <laughs> his noose is dark well he doesn't believe he has one so it's got like, it's got to be real dark at that it's point it's it's so dark. dark that you can't even perceive like it yeah this i mean this is like wow you know and like i don't know how these people get in the church anyways so yeah watch out for these guys um because i'll tell you like it's just one of those things that's it's super unsatisfying, but it is what it is. There's just some things you can't read read your way out of. I'm sorry. Oh, no. There's just some oh, things no. you can't read your way out of. I think there's also this the it's interesting that someone would deny this aspect of human reality because mm-hmm. I mean, out even the the church is d- describing and explaining the truth of it, but I think everybody, you know, there's this idea that like from the mouths of babes, right? Like it's the, the the truth and like the emperor's new clothes that of course it's like the innocent child and like the pure of heart and that kids say the darndest things and all of this, that it's like that truth that comes out of a child's mouth, mm-hmm. that perfectly calibrated, perfectly mm-hmm. ordered, that has nothing to do with intellectualism or anything and is mm-hmm. just a pure perception of reality. Mm-hmm. We all have experienced that firsthand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you're That's- like, and people that's are like, news. well, why? That's it. <laughs> that's their right? So it's like, what that's else could it be? Yeah. Because it obviously goes away. Yeah. Like if you don't. Yeah. And and also this idea of the the I'm coming to my mind. Verily, verily, I tell Saint you, Gabriel you of Georgia. In, there you go. Like as one of these little children, you shall no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. That's it. How you do know, you? The, <laughs> the person who denies the news, as I've been wanting to say this. But did you ever hear about the lady who, um, under the influence of meth, like tainted meth, she took out her own eyeballs? Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Pushed them. That's so horrific. Oh, my yeah. God. But it, that's a little bit like if you're denying. Exactly. You, yeah. You see, you know. you see, that's, that's exactly how I thought. I was like, oh, my gosh. Because then you're not really interacting with God. And, like, I I know that when kids say stuff, about spiritual things with discernment it's like no i should be paying attention yes. because like when my little my little one and a half year old like looks up in liturgy and just like smiles and she's looking at nothing i'm like and same same with um we have one of those like little kid saint books i don't mm-hmm. know what they're called for saint papa nicholas planus mm-hmm. it's a saint it's near and dear and um to our family and it said only the kids would see him floating during liturgy. When he would be praying, only the kids would see it. The adults wouldn't see it. And mm-hmm. and you know, and this for the sake of me just really not caring what people think, I do want to touch on something because this is the I this is the concept I wanted to talk about tonight. But I was like, let's see if Cyprian has something. And Cyprian had something, and it's kind of spiraled and it's kind of like dovetailed okay. really nicely. Is Bear with me. So, you know, like in the Polar Express, if the bell stops ringing, you can't hear it anymore. You've lost the Christmas magic. Do you know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about? Mm-hmm. And in the like in Hook, how uh, Peter couldn't fly anymore. Mm-hmm. And like Wendy lost the ability to fly. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just because it's Christmas time. But there's this reoccurring theme of like that's happening right now. And I'm trying to relate it spiritually is like what like. 
can you regain that as an Orthodox Christian? Can you like regain, like, I don't want to say the Christmas magic, but like be able to regain that like innocence because I'm, I'm trying to explain to someone the other day. It's like, like Peter at in hook, like they do the, there you are, like pulls mm-hmm. his face back and uh, finds him. It, I just want to just, it's that, that scene. That I'm scene about to is, cry right yeah, now. That no. scene is good. wow. Oh so at my new oh job, my God. at my job, they years. have there's a day room <laughs> and there's a TV in it, and people can watch TV. And it was like my third day on the job, and I am fully admitting this to our millions of of followers right now. Um, that like that movie was playing. While like I was just like my third day in the job and they're trying to explain something to me about the computer system. I kept looking over and I was like, will you excuse me for one minute? Like the part where Peter reaches for Wendy and she turns around, he pulls his hand back in horror because she's old. Right. And like, it's just, it was that it was the, there you are. It was like the him, like um, not appreciating his son and being like, letting his son be a son. I was like texting my wife. I was like, I'm ruining my son's life. I'm not like letting him be a, a kid. And I'm already like, when did I lose it? Because I tried so hard not to lose it. Mm-hmm. I like fully went up to the bathroom and like sobbed for like a minute and then came back. And I was like, so what were you saying about the, like, it was a whole thing because hook gets me every single time. Every time, like, man. Hey, I oh my God. And that's literally one of the criticisms about that movie is the fact that it's like, it's overly sentimental. I'm like, I don't know what it is but spielberg like tapped into something that like wholly destroys me every single time i watch that well movie. it's because it, like it is Google. robin williams like it is him right like that's 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 susan hook right he's the star yeah. He's, he's, yeah no it is him like that's the whole thing like peter P- robin williams is the is the peter pan character like he is the archetype of the peter pan character it, that's that's there like he's like, he's embodied like because at the time dude he was a strung out drug addict as he's making that movie but he's also seen as like this uh mercurial you know childlike figure yeah. even so much as playing mork from orc who wasn't a literally an adult child yeah, yeah. right so it's like he Man. is peter pan like wow. that's why it gets you is because you're actually watching this man wow. play out his own drama of who he actually yeah. is. That's heavy. Right? So, it's crazy. Cool whole thing. Has, has anyone done an ever deep dive on that too? Because I know, don't know, but wow. But even with you like know. Robin Williams was like, um, you know, there's that one movie. I've only seen it once. And there's a time I was trying to find it. I couldn't find it. Like it wasn't in like blockbuster I, mm. i'm dating myself like it wasn't a mm-hmm. blockbuster it wasn't like and then i tried to find netflix i couldn't get it, it was like um what dreams may come man yes. don't even get me started oh yeah. like man yeah that, yeah there's a whole there's like a whole thing there and it's one of those things where you're not really watching movies until you're like breaking the fourth wall in my mind like you're yeah. not really watching movies until you get meta, like the way we are now. Because I'm like, yeah. there's a whole thing in the fact of like this, and then like Rob Williams' life, like just like I never thought about what you did, what you did with Hook right there. But I have thought about, I have thought about Rob Williams in that light with what dreams may come because he ends up, you know, committing suicide and the death and all that, and it's just like heavy you know what i mean it's it's pretty yeah it's pretty wild there's like there's a list of movies i can't watch because they just it just leaves me in a place like i'm not profitable for like a whole day <laughs> like i'm just like it just leaves what was the, the, was the, der- the red book was the diet what was the, the uh oh gosh i don't want to out myself like that but was it the uh <laughs> The diary, the um, the notebook, the notebook. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, I, I remember watching Can't the that notebook one. <laughs> with Papadia, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh!" Grown men weeping. Grown men. <laughs> I remember. Um... <laughs> I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, 
for real. Yeah, you that know, was <laughs> like you just like I'm so the worst. Yeah, yeah, no, one hundred percent. Um, I love you. I'm so sorry for everything. <laughs> oh man, man. <laughs> incredible, incredible. That and then um, uh, Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind. That's another one. That's yeah. a yeah. That was that's another. the one where that actually that movie uh, got my wife and I back together. She had oh. dumped. She had dumped me. Mm. Uh, we were like been to dating for like two years or something like that. And she dumped me because I was being a loser. Um, and uh, she basically, I went into town. I went out of town for my grandma's funeral. And um, she watched that movie while I was gone for like the first time. And she's like, I want to be with Andrew. Like, I, I want to be with. So when, when I came back, she's like, yeah, let's do this. I was like, all right, cool. So then we got engaged shortly thereafter. But I do want to, because this is something, and I think it's because of Christmas, and I see like this really, really like bastardized version of trying to get that innocence back. And it usually involves like in the circles that White I, House tap dancing videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah. No, I mean I was gonna say Oh, you haven't the seen the Biden Christmas? You haven't seen the Biden Christmas video? No, that oh, is don't, don't watch ludicrous. It. It's ludicrous. But it's scary. It usually involves weed and booze. And like trying very hard to recapture something that they had as a child. Mm -hmm. And what I've, what I've, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, back up a little bit. They're trying to recapture something they had as a child by ingesting weed and booze. For real. It's, it happens. It's like, so they want to surround themselves with all the trappings of Christmas. And because they probably, nostalgia, nostalgia, but. I would say it goes a little bit farther because I have gone down because as a person who really, really loves Christmas, I just and by the way, it's only gotten better since I've actually started taking the fast a little bit seriously. Mm -hmm. The actual like being able to like enjoy, like just be in like Mm -hmm. and not be full of gunk, like not be full of sugar Mm -hmm. cookies and like ham sandwiches Mm -hmm. and like hot, hot, like hot chocolate like in standing in awe of like a gigantic Christmas tree. It's like, and like not, that was one of the things that I experienced when I became a catechumen is Christmas actually started to feel like Christmas again. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, because it is like, like Linus, it is, it's Christ. He's the only thing that gives it. It's he's the only thing that gives it a center. Otherwise it is all just trappings. It's just like you wear the sweaters and you do, you sometimes people go so, hard and every single thing that they do is christmas themed they won't eat anything unless whatever whatever anyway and i see this like bastardized version of trying to recapture that spirit of how they're trying to be peter pan again but there is no there is nothing to get them from peter pan from robin williams to peter pan there's like there's nothing there to get them from being an adult with a jaded adult view of things back to the childlike innocence. And I wanted to ask. And it's so funny to me because Christmas is the, from my perspective, Christmas is the feast, the holiday precisely for cynicism period. Because if you're like, man, you know, um, you know, joy, peace, goodwill towards men, you know, like, like, why? How is that possible? Because God has chosen to be made incarnate amongst us. Like, Emmanuel, God is with us, you know, like, we have hope now, right? And, and the only one who can set things right has, has come, right? Now is the time to reflect on the, the corruption of Ukraine and the corruption of the governments and the backwardness of society and, you know, like I, I, everything you want to, th- every, every terrible thing we've talked about all year, now is the time to bring it to the manger and offer it to the king and be like, you alone. For real. You alone. For Like, I, the thing that ever most everyone... 
I think, and what I'm speaking, the people I'm talking about right now are the adult children. I don't know if they, the proper term is the adult millennial children who buy toys, I guess, even though they're like in their mid thirties or whatever, you know who I'm talking about? Like play yes. video games obsessively, yes. you know, look at porn, you know, smoke mm -hmm. weed, whatever. Don't want to have kids because they don't want to be shackled down, you know, whatever. It's like the thing that ever, all their Christmas trappings is always missing and I'm a, I grew up Western is a nativity set. It's like, yes. you have no idea how important that is. That is, you yep. are like, you're essentially celebrating. I can't think of a proper metaphor right now, but it's like, you're essentially, it's like if you bought like an album and you did everything, but listen to the music, it's like, <laughs> if you looked at the album and you looked at the liner notes and you looked at the art and you read all the lyrics and you like even looked it up on Wikipedia you found everything, but you did everything except actually put it on and play it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you've completely missed the point. And like, as a, I like, I try mm -hmm. very hard. That's a really good analogy, Andrew. Mm -hmm. It's a oh, really yeah. good analogy. Hey, the Holy Spirit, he does give you words when, you know, when you're looking for him. And um, I try pretty hard because like, when I watch stuff like Hook, and I see that like child, I, I try very hard to maintain that. I don't want to lose that in myself. Like I want to be, I still want that. I don't want to be a kid. I, I don't want to shirk responsibility. I don't want to do whatever I want, whatever I want. But I want to be able to like still have fun and be goofy and stupid. And like in, in a childlike and innocent way. And I think at the end of everything, what I'm trying to ask is this is a thing, right? Within the church, like I'm not like, because there is the proverb of when when you're a child, you act as a child, but when you become a man, leave such childish things behind. Mm -hmm. Like there is a way of like maintaining that innocence in a childlike way, right? Like am I am I making? But the sense? innocence isn't child. But the innocent is innocence isn't childish. Yeah, it's pure. It's childlike. pure. It's, childish. pure. Mm -hmm. it's purity. It's not. It's not a childish thing. Right. Like it's a it's a pure thing. What you're describing is so good because I think that it, it it like it's indicative of so like it's such a broad concept. But this concept of like people moving in reverse, like they see something, especially with tradition. Like I see this so often, but I see this even with like people first approaching the Orthodox Church is that they see like the they'll get enamored and it with good reason of like the beauty of the aesthetic of the church, like the most beautiful cathedrals and how they're built like this. And sure. what they miss is they miss like, well, the reason that it's beautiful and it's built like this, the reason that people would take the time and effort and resources and money and devote it to this is because of, of who it's in worship of. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, of course, there's you couldn't build something grand enough to represent what's the the grandeur at the core, mm. which which is the child in the manger. And I think that that's exactly what you're saying of like it's missing a nativity set. And it's almost like, dude, if it's missing the nativity set, you the nativity set is the start around which all of those things have meaning. That, like that's all of those things, yes. all of those things emerged from the 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 child in the manger. Like without the child in the manger, these things have no meaning. They couldn't have even emerged. And pe instead, people go backwards. And this is what we were talking about, like the Christian ism, where they want Christianity, but they don't want Christ. Mm -hmm. Like they're like, oh, these cathedrals are so useful. Mm -hmm. but they don't want Christ. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, it's so useful for displaying the power of a culture or something. Mm -hmm. It's like, but that culture doesn't exist without Christ. Christ and is that's, that culture. And <laughs> if that's, that hits so close to home right now. Cause that's, I'm seeing even now that still needs to be preached. Cause that's even now, I, I think we're like, now we're turning again, but like, I think, even now, that is something like we can't drop because it's still happening. There's still people who um, don't understand it. And I, I think that's the thing is like, see, this is the difference, right? Um, like the difference between the Latin church, the Western church, and the Eastern church is that 
when the Eastern Church has failures, you're seeing the failures of man that reveal the glory of God. Mm -hmm. When the Western Church fails, you're seeing the failure of those structures and, and, and those things which are have left Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? There's that's an interesting distinction. There's, Can you there's, please dig further into that, Father? That, that's a very interesting distinction. There's, there's indiv Don't get me wrong. It, there's individuals within that within the, the Western Latin Church, the Frankish Church. There's individuals who are trying to find Christ and cling to Christ, but they're individuals. But the institution itself has left Christ a long time ago. Whereas in the Eastern Church, you've got plenty of individuals who, you know, for whatever reason, aren't seeking Christ, whatever. But the body of the Eastern Church, right, is the body of Christ. And you, you that's the difference when the, the failures of the one reveals the truth of the other, right? And, and that's, I think, a huge thing because... Even now, you know, when I, so much of what, so much of what the struggle is, like when I look, when I step back and I, I think about the difference between, let's say like a Taylor Marshall, you know what I mean? Like what he's talking about, he's talking about morality, moralism, our conservative culture, like how are we going to win the fight, blah, 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 Right. And that's couched in devotions and this and that. I know some people are going to lose their mind. Great. But, like, that's what it's talking about. It's like, oh, it's never explicitly said, like, how we save our great Western culture, but that's how it's couched. Whereas mm -hmm. when you look at what the kind of, like, um, the contrast would be in the in the Eastern Church, just think of kind of, like, most of your whatever YouTube you, YouTubers. Like, an Orthodox YouTuber, quote-unquote, is usually talking about like yeah, there's history and yeah, there's these like philosophical theological arguments, but like there's a there's a thread of Christ, of like hey, if you don't got Christ, you know, I mean, right? Whereas on the other side of it, it's always about like the chauvinism of Western <laughs> civilization and like power and like you know the crumbling of our morals and all that stuff. And it's like well, Christ is often not mentioned in those presentations. Like the, I often am listening for the word Christ. That's some, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. And so that's, you know, and whatever. You could say the sweeping generalization, but I watch too much of that stuff. You know, unfortunately, I'm telling you, you know, it's not just, I think if you were to step back and hear what I'm saying, you, you'd see that that's the case. And that's because, you know, it's like, I'll, I've said this before, but I, I'll never forget. This is like 2003. I think, no, uh, 2004, 2004, maybe 2005. And I'm at Loyola Marymount. And there's a, there's a colloquium. And it was the Monsignor there who's like, uh, he was like the high ranking Monsignor at Loyola Marymount in LA. Father Justin, who at the time was the only English speaking monastic um, at St. Catherine's in Sinai. And then some evangelical Yahoo guy. And, you know, the Monsignor was like, well, this is interesting, you know, kind of like we're having our own little um, kind of like uh, our own little branch theory here. Right. And he's like, you know, we have the Catholics representing administrative skill and authority. <laughs> and you have the Orthodox representing, you know, I think he said something like tradition and beauty. And then we have the evangelicals representing academia and something else to that degree. And I was like. Okay. And that right there, that little statement just kind of still sums up how they see everything. Right. And, and over time it's gotten a little bit better. It's like, Oh yeah, that's great. Cause you know, as, as they've, um, as they've, as icons have kind of come into vogue for them, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, that's quaint. The Orthodox have, hey, we have icons too, whatever. But what it comes down to is like, they, that view of, you know, it's like, again, Dostoevsky and, and the Grand Inquisitor, just like authority and power categories, zoological, like, like that is, that is what, this is what they've chosen, the, the Western church. And so you see, as those things are crumbling and being lost, it's what they're always pining after. 
It's what they're always pining after. That's it's what they're always lamenting, right? But the reality is, is if you have Christ, then when you lose those things, you begin to go glory to God. You know what I mean? You you see it for what it is. God's stripping us of those things. But if you don't have Christ, then you know it's just you have to frame it in, in exclusively, exclusively kind of culture war statements and things like that. That's I mean, why, like, there's a culture war aspect to it for us, mm. but it isn't the main thing, right? As an Orthodox Christian, the culture war mm. can't be the main thing, and, and here's why, right? This is this is why hopefully some people will hear me on this one, because we lose, <laughs> right. right? Like, ding, 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 here's the news flash, we lose. In the right? worldly sense. In the worldly sense, we lose. We've always right. lost. And that's right. that's how the master, that's how the shepherd keeps us close, because yes. he's like, I'm your reward, I'm I'm what you're looking for, right? You losing these things, that is my hand, right? Because mm -hmm. we're know. his body, because we're his body, right? This and this is this uh, this goes full circle back to, and why why the praying for doors to be closed is so feels to me like now it feels like of course mm. but i think in first hearing it it felt one of the most foreign ideas coming to one of the most foreign ideas in orthodoxy because you know whether it's the catholics if it's the catholics and like you wouldn't pray for doors to be closed because it, the idea is that no this administrative structure of the church can do Mm -hmm. All of can can rule the world. Mm -hmm. So we should just pray that yeah. our administrators are talented enough to get us to this place that we have decided we want to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from the evangelical standpoint, it goes to prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. Why on earth would you pray for God to close the door? No, God is going to open all mm -hmm. the doors for you. Just send me 1999 every mm -hmm. two weeks. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because... The idea would be, well, if it fails, then then this is actually exposing the fact that Christ is not there. Mm -hmm. Christ is not inside your structure. Mm -hmm. Whereas the closing of the doors is the idea of like, no, actually, I want you to burn off. Lord, I want you to burn off everything yes. except for you. Yes. Burn off everything so that I can see you, please. Yes. Like destroy the structure. Destroy it, it all. And that's just leave it. you behind. That's all I want is you. That's it. That's it. And... Here's on the one hand, the the quote unquote evangelical or the charismatic who would be like, yeah, we have that sentiment, mm -hmm. yeah. But the thing is, is you may have that you may have that sentiment, but that's all it is is a sentiment. Sentiment. Because when it comes down to it, you don't have the means to sustain that. You know, well, because means. you will be left with nothing. You will if be left with nothing. If everything was burned away, there's no, Christ is not there. You will be left with nothing because the thing is, is the, the very things that they have the structure built on, speaking as a former evangelical, mm -hmm. the things that you have those structures built on, he'll rip those away too. And then what? Right. And then, like, for instance. Well, hopefully, then you will actually come to him. Well, and that's what happens. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or I don't want to give that because I, I, I know more. Who just chose to walk away and turn right, away right, than, than who right. became Orthodox. Right. For as many people I've known who become Orthodox, I know more who've chosen just to not be Christian anymore and be like, oh yeah, I I did that. They're and disillusioned, now I'm, yeah. Now I'm whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So so there's that on that one end. But on the other end of it, you know, it's like I don't I don't even know what to say to some, you know, good, good pious Catholics. You know, I mean, I definitely uh... It's a bad week to be a Catholic. Like, oh yeah, what happened? The the Pope blessing same sex marriages. It was yeah. that. I mean, that's been in the works, but it, did something come out again like this week? Yeah, or just yeah, he's like he's come out and been like, you know, hey, yeah, as long as the ceremony doesn't resemble marriage, we're good. Like it, it you know, we're good. Be a bad week to turn away from Orthodoxy back to Catholicism. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Shots across the bow, but you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it hits. He's like, uh, yeah, no, that's cool, that's good. I I give my blessing for it. So yeah, I mean, I think it's probably been unspoken for a long time. Wow. Yeah, I and mean, it's, it's spoken now. It's 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 one of those things where 
I guess kind of coming back around to this thing of, I don't want to get as explicit in like the noose, whatever, but the noose, you know what I mean? And really, because once, once you're seeing, um, it, it's the whole cipher thing. It's like, man, it takes a lot. Um, like matrix cipher. I know the steak is juicy, whatever. It's just to close your eyes again and to be like, yeah, I don't really know if I want you, you know, because that, that's what we're talking about is I don't know if I really want you. And that's objectively the experience of the body of Christ, which is the mm-hmm. Orthodox church, because that's the experience of the body of Christ in, you know, communist Balkans in Russia. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, the, you know, the, the Muslim yoke, uh in you know in the levant and near east and the mediterranean like you know what i mean that's that's the experience and getting back to christmas this is why i think that even something as we roll our eyes about it but the fact that like yeah you know much love to the new calendar folk you know no problem here it's all good but yeah, there's something to be said even for like the holding out of the of the old calendar you know, there's there's these things that I think in the Orthodox experience are there to help us always keep that tension of being in the world but not of it, you, where you don't have to really work at it because it's like, yeah, Christmas. We were we've been celebrating old calendar Christmas even when we were in a new calendar church, and that was de facto because of like our relationship with the monastery and everything, but. I'm so grateful for it because I've raised my kids, you know, there's the thing that, that whatever, it's all good, whatever, like Xmas, <laughs> right? right. And, and then, but my kids have always, my kids have always been raised having the ability to be like, no, this is Christmas because of the old calendar. Right. So that's just one little thing of the, of the Orthodox experience that really kind of, is baked in that says mm-hmm. you're not of this world. You're, you're mine. Mm-hmm. You belong to me. And the more that you, and that's why we're Israel, right? Mm-hmm. Like the more, the more that you want to try to like be with the world and whatever the, you know, it's going to be a rough go of you, a rough go of it for you. Just embrace that you're mine and you're not of this world. You know, that little, it's funny because I was just, it's not funny. It, it happens constantly. Uh, but I was just speaking with the with the brother in Christ who was who's a convert German, and um, we were literally just talking about that fact and how it is. It's it's been so incredible, and I'm so thankful to be able to have that, especially that that and knowing that that there's going to be this period that is after the Western Christmas Xmas thing where to be able to knuckle down into the, to, to the, the mystical and the spiritual yeah. of the, of the season. Yeah. Unimpeded. Yeah. I'm going to make a bunch of people mad at me, hopefully. And hopefully then they'll be not mad. <laughs> um, but for all my convert friends out there, I just want to encourage you. If you're like in a new calendar church, no problem. God bless you. It's all good. Ho, ho, ho. But I would really submit this to people to just consider just from my own kind of personal experience, not even speaking as a priest, but just like as someone who's been in the church, a convert, raised a family, you know what I mean? Seriously consider celebrating Christmas on the old calendar. Like, yeah, do your stuff with your parish. That's that's good, whatever. But seriously consider it. And I know that it gets tough because then it's like gets into theophany, whatever. But I'm just saying there's something that happens in our context, in our culture, that once everything's kind of blown by, mm-hmm. Christ shines through in, in the feast in a different way. Mm. I'm just telling you from experience. And it's one of those well, there's things. There's no noise. Where, it's, there's no noise. It's signal. It's all no, signal, no it's noise. Signal. Yeah. There's no noise. And I get it. The whole like, yeah, but my family, 
mm-hmm. and like I don't want to make it weird for them. They only think it's weird because we're orthodox. They, you know, that's part of your problem right there. Mm-hmm. That's part of that's part of the thing that wears you down. Is like I don't want to do it because it's gonna like that's the problem. Like don't mm-hmm. care about that. Just try it. Just try it for like you know a period of time, a couple of years, or whatever, and you'll see that like I I I highly doubt many would want to go back. And if they do, they're going to have to concede they want to go back because it's too hard or inconvenient. Mm-hmm. But the spiritual fruit you'll get from it as a convert, as living in this society, it's undeniable. Because, and I know there's different opinions of it, but like the one argument I've heard is like, well, you know, it's like holding out. We got to hold out and not let commercialism, the paganism and all that stuff, secularism went out. But I'm like, it's already has yeah. and now and now it's just a matter of are you how fast are you gonna let that chip away at your family and the soul of your community that's just my perspective but it, i think i i feel pretty good i'll go to bat on this one because again you know i've been in i've been formally in in an old calendar church for you know nine years or whatever eight years whatever but we've been celebrating old calendar Christmas the whole time we've been in the church the whole time, even when we're in new calendar church. And I'm just telling you, it's like, it, there's a difference because of it, because it, it, because you are forced to be like the whole world is like, and Hey, I love Xmas stuff. Now living in Missouri, thanks to Andrew, like he converted me to it. It's like, yeah, it's great. Whatever. We have a great time. Great time. Mm-hmm. I'm not, mm-hmm. and I mean that we have a great time. And in some sense, it's kind of just augmented my, enjoyment of the, because when it's christmas and it's the mass of the christ it's like it's it's mm. the world just like they um they upend it there's all this feasting beforehand mm-hmm. and then they get to it and there's this gigantic Bird. letdown mm. it's just like <laughs> like it's like january yeah for most people january and february are the two most depressing months is because the joy of of the hangover Christmas, of the, the yep. hangover and like everyone's all sugared and alcoholed out and um, all like Christmas hammed out. The church maintains the correct order of the preparation, the feast. The feast yep. comes afterwards. So the best part, not the best part, but mm-hmm. even in like the worldly sense of like, I guess, satisfying your fleshly mm-hmm. desires or whatever comes Mm -hmm. afterwards and like that's the best part the preparation beforehand the struggle and by the way like that was one of the things i was really worried about when i started to actually take it a little bit i still whatever but take it a little bit more seriously with the fasting was like oh i'm basically sacrificing my christmas spirit which i've loved my entire life to god i'm basically like i'm like yeah you are guess what he gives you the thing you've been looking for all along which is like you're not all slogged out on eggnog to to like actually see the thing for what it is. And it's like, it's a perfect metaphor of like, or it's like a perfect image of like the candy canes and the presents and the trees all get swept away. And then like the ash and remains of all that stuff, because mm-hmm. by the way, everyone just takes it down and throws it out. Mm-hmm. It's still Christ. It's mm-hmm. like, it, there's like nothing holy it's not even like nothing like traditionally holy there's like nothing sacred because the things that brought you so much joy you just throw it out throw it out you so just, those like, aren't the things Christmas. obviously those are not the things you just right? take the presents you open it the kids don't care they got their little instant gratification they throw it. what's mm-hmm. the next toy they rip yep. open and get the toy throw mm-hmm. it they get the next toy and then they're all super cranky the rest of the day yep and they're just like well where's the next endorphin drop and i'm like there is no more and then and like, this is why people dread the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So many people dread the season because they're like, it's just so empty. It's this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, of course it's empty without Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How could it not be empty without Christ? Mm-hmm. It's Christ. Mm-hmm. Mass. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> like, how could it not be empty? Of course it is. The, all the boxes have nothing in them. Yeah. And all the boxes have, have nothing in them. In them. Yeah, that's it, man. Oh. They're just empty. They're just window dressing. Man. Man. And they all get thrown out, and the toys are broken. And yep. half the time, the kids don't like them anyway. And then they just, you know, they're looking forward to the next 
cool thing, but there is no cool thing because then we no. have theophany. And theophany is like amazing. Awesome. It's water. It's yeah. just so awesome. it's like cold and wet. And I don't know, man. It's just like is this something that's just be said that how incredible it is. And it's like, you know, we sacrificed so much as Americans, and I, I can only speak as an American to get where we are materially. Mm. We've just sacrificed so much. And like it's just like it's not even like i mean sacrifice I, to who is the question mm. yeah i mean mm. yeah that's a good point I, mm. I because i was thinking of like them throwing the extra cargo off the ship to so that they could their pleasure ship could just move faster and faster and faster to get to the next well, that's thing a sacrifice but no. to poseidon sacrifice mm. to poseidon. there you go oh man yeah. <laughs> i mean you know what, you know what the kids would say you're, you're heating up yeah keep going i got i got <laughs> i got at least 12 i got at least 12 <laughs> and this i i think that that's that's the that's what's missed is that 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 is i mean it is a sacrifice it's a you know when people are like oh it's a pagan holiday it's like well it's a pagan holiday if you're sacrificing to pagan gods mm. mm-hmm like sure well sure any day is a pagan holiday if mm-hmm. the gods that if your god is a pagan god mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. man but if your sacrifices are to christ well it, clearly it can't be a pagan holiday i mean yeah and yeah that was a weird thing that kept coming up and we don't have to get into it but is, is christmas pagan and jonathan Peugeot actually had like a pretty good and i'm not like a big jonathan Peugeot guy he's fine like he doesn't do anything wrong my hang-ups with him are pretty personal but it's just like um, he actually had like a pretty good video about it. But I think that it goes deeper because it's like I think people naturally feel that something is wrong with the holiday. It's just like naturally something is just wrong with it. Something's broken about it and they feel it. But like it's and when it's just tradition for tradition's sake and nobody knows why anybody does anything anymore. It's like, why do we bring in a tree and put lights on? Like, what? Is, that doesn't make any sense. And like, why are we listening to, why are we singing these old carols? And like, you know, and so then there's the new traditions, which suck. You know, it's like, you know, I don't, I can't even think of one off the top of my head, but it's like, nobody writes new Christmas music. What was the last Christmas song that came Actually, out? Actually, I just want to say this, it's been a while. Witch Hazel just put out a Christmas um, song. Okay. And it is so... Good. Okay. All right. It's I'm actually... King of Israel. It is... It's gotta go on Spotify. It is yeah. so good. It's like, man, like this is this is like objectively like an incredible Christmas song. Like it's King of incredible. Israel. King of Israel. Just put it out. It's incredible. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. It's yeah. incredible. It's going on the playlist right now. Kipper Crab Christmas is great, too, by the way. So, yeah, okay. and I think that there's also something to be said about Baroque Christmas music. I think Baroque oh. Christmas music is like, it's got to be in the mix a little bit. Like, I'm all about my Andy Williams. And uh, for some reason, Brenda Lee grew up, like blew up this year, the Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, which is an amazing song. I love that song. Oh, but for yeah. some, what's that? No, oh yeah, it's just yeah, it's just a great song. But for some reason, everyone's like freaking out about it right now. Why? But I it, it surpassed Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas." All I want is for you. Christmas is you. Um, yeah, that was the that was for decades. It's that a was good song. the song. It's the, a good song. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. It's a good song. It's definitely on my on my Spotify playlist. But mm-hmm. that Baroque Christmas music, especially that old timey Christmas music, it's like. Man, that's like there's something that's really, really good. And I mean, you know, I don't know. There's there's these feelings that come out. And I mean, it, it, we're all just going to sound like, but the, you know, the materialism and everything. It's like, and we've struggled with this with our own children because like they did, they, they totally, how could they not fall into that trap? You know, they're all single digits. You know, they're like five years old. That's that, why old counter Christmas rules. <laughs> I mean, and I think. That January 7th, there is something, it's just like, because I agree, and it's like, you know, that minor threat song, like, out of step. We're just slightly out of step with the world, you know? Like, oh, I mean, and 
because the world is out of step with because reality. The world is wrong. It's yeah. just wrong. And like, and I was just having this conversation with the place I'm I'm interning at right now. That they literally like told me there is no objective truth to anything. And I remember just like, I didn't know people like you still existed. Like I, I just, it's been so long since I've had a conversation and they're like, no, it's entire. They didn't come out and say it, but they're like, no, the truth is entirely up to you and how you're perceiving it. And you know what I tell people like that? I'm like, uh, I uh, let's okay. Let's do it. Uh, go grab me a very large knife. Okay. Now, <laughs> now put your hand down. Okay. <laughs> I'm about to take this knife and I'm about to run it through your hand, right? No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. There's no no pain involved there. Yeah. You can just it's it's just how you perceive it. There won't be pain. You won't bleed out. There will be no problem. Yeah. That's that everything is subjective until somebody has to actually deal with pain. And I that's and I was like okay. Oh, bar. <laughs> How much? <laughs> Put your hand in the box. Put your hand yeah, in the box. That's it, man. Dom Jabbar. Like that's yeah, because th th it's even in that case. And I, I think that this is th these are people. This is actually the real problem that we have. The problem that we have is there's not enough suffering. Oh yeah, that's there's not that's enough pain. I tell ninety percent. Only the of... only people who have not experienced pain who are comfortably numb could ever say something so dumb as "there's no objective reality." Mm -hmm. This is the dumbest thing. It's the dumbest thing somebody could ever say. Mm -hmm. I like. I don't know. Like, I think that is the problem. That's ninety percent the problem, and nobody can hear it. So I stopped saying it. I was like, you know, what your problem is your problem is you don't have enough problems. Like that's the problem. Is it's suffering like, from not suffering? What's that, Father? Suffering, suffering from not suffering. Yeah, yeah, suffering from not because like I think you talked under the while ago about the the correction system. Mm -hmm. it's like if it's going to be the correctional system, let's have it be the correctional system. Like no more yeah. of this like, you know, treating them humanely while treating them poorly. Like because that middle path, I... that lukewarm, yeah. like yeah, they they should be able to have certain rights, but they're also getting punished, but they should have certain rights, but they're also getting it's like no, if it's the correctional <laughs> system, let's have it be the correctional system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because otherwise what you wind up with is you just wind up with the demons running wild inside the mm -hmm. little cage that you've given. And it's just like, it's just, and people it's become demon, demons. It's, a, it's a demon incubators. It's a demon. It's a demon incubator. <laughs> Ser clearly it's, it's a demon it's incubator. It's a demon incubator. Man. Yeah. And it people, is because, are, uh, people are becoming, uh, they're coming out much, 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 have you much, seen, much, much worse. Have you much, seen, much worse. there's a couple montages of people that had their years oh, going in and out. Aggression. And they, there's one where a dude starts off relatively normal. He starts shaving his head. He gets some face tattoos. And for some reason, they shave off his eyebrows and permanently tattoos. these like super thick, weird eyebrows. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what culture that's a part of or anything. Well, he and, got turned out. That's. Probably. Well, and I figured that's what it was, but I didn't really want to go there. But like, and and then he started to look more feminine, you know, started doing like more things like that. It's like, okay, sure. But like, everyone comes out worse. And like, I work, I mean, you know, at my old job, 60% of the people I dealt with were from corrections. And like, no, I mean, it just gets worse. So you just get worse going in there. You don't learn anything except like just how not to get caught and how to do better at it next time. And, you know, so anyway. Yeah, your problem is you don't have enough problems. So, yeah, um, because and then we'll real problems. You don't have enough, You don't. You don't have real problems. Like real problems, and, and that's the obje that's the objective. I think that's the objective aspect, right? Is that you? You don't. It's and this is why I say pain. Like pain is very important. I've 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 really learned that if I don't, if I don't have a practice of subjecting myself to some. To some pain, I completely lose perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, it's a set, it's asceticism, right? But it's like yeah. I completely lose perspective to where it's just like, well, what's? I th I think that my problems are way bigger than they are, mm -hmm. and then you know, I the thing that helps is to think back to the times when I've been humbled by actual like being physically impaired by pain, mm -hmm. and it's in those moments that I'm like, oh. If I could only just have the problem of that person annoying me. I know. 
right now. But if I could this, just be annoyed by some terrible person who's done something bad to me to take this real pain away from me, oh, please give it back to me, Lord. The, in, <laughs> the insanity, too, is because there's people, again, not enough problems. And I encountered this with someone who I love and, and you know, I'm not really talking smack on them. It it's just the circumstances of their life, so, you know, mid thirties. Um, and they accidentally pulled out in of a um, car uh, of a parking lot and there's a divot and they scraped and they, there's like some kind of tarp or something. Mm -hmm. There's like some kind of plastic molding underneath the car and it dragged off a little bit. It like got yeah. pulled off a little bit. Not a big deal. They were freaking out about it. And like, and like, so I'm like, man, I'm like driving along with like my bumper hanging off. And like, I'm just like, because I've got like these, like, you know, I'm like, how am I going to work? You know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to work this into my schedule? What's going on with these things? Okay. Like, you know, how is this going to happen? Like, what are we going to do here? And like, but the thing is, is like, not for one minute, do I envy that person? Like, I don't right. envy that person. It's like, cause when you have real problems, when there's a real thing, like there, you just face palming. The like little annoyances of every day, just like you're just like, no, I don't got time for I don't you. Have time. I don't got I don't time, have time for, for that. you. Yeah. I don't, I don't care. It's like, what do you want for lunch? I don't care. Nutrients. Yeah, is there a fire today, Andrew? Was a, I like that. that mm -hmm. Falming those little ones, man. I mean, the, that's it's, it's so, like it's so true. It's like, do you want goat or dairy, or do you want goat or like cow cheese on your nachos? Like. I don't put it, it put it in front of me I, whatever's I in front of me whatever. i'll eat it you have yeah. plain beans that i can just eat and not right. make me feel like crap afterwards so i can get yeah. some nutrients and protein is that cool do you have dry nuts because i got stuff to do i got to get out of here it's like mm -hmm. i tell you man walnuts and raisins walnuts and raisins is a, an amazing snack it's like it's a perfect lunch substitute a little bit of sugar a little bit of protein you're good to go and like and walnuts help with your blood sugar so it kind of evens your mood out if you're feeling kind of like cranky or whatever, walnuts and raisins. And you're like, you're good to go. And it's like, okay, let's get out of here. We got stuff to do. I and mean, like we have you have the option of goat cheese and cow cheese. I mean, you have you have cheese. I know. It's really hard for it's really hard for us to like <laughs> to for us to perceive. I mean, I think I mean, father. I, I don't know if I'm off base saying this, but it seems like it was probably easier to be a saint at a time when people had nothing. Oh, no, 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 That's, no, 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 no. That's not up for debate. That's objective truth. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's why, that's why those who are like in the last days will be so great because it's right. like, it's tough just to be an actual Christian now. Right. Like, truly. <laughs> right. Truly, because like you know, it's it's stuff like this. It's like God help us, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're complaining about this, just the most pettiest, smallest things, you know. And like this is, it's an interesting thing because, you know, one of the things that the fathers talk about, which are like really grave sins, the real problematic is like forgetfulness and ignorance, mm -hmm. because of this very reason, you know. And it's like. I don't know. I, I thank God. I, I don't, I mean, I remember my stuff. That's, you know, I don't, I'm not, I just, I, I give all praise and, and thanks to God for that because it matters. It matters. It's, it's really, really hard to, you can do it and people do it, unfortunately. But it's really hard to kind of get into that that space if you remember what you've been through. That's why for me, when like I've known people have gone through things and I see them just like tripping out on small stuff, it's just it's such a bummer because I'm like, you've been through things. Right. Don't right, like right, right, right. Don't don't throw those treasures out. You going through that pain however many years ago, that's a blessing. Yeah. Channel it. Like you know, or as Wesley, you know, as as Blade says in Blade Two, use it. You know, just like use it, just right. use it. You know, it's like that's a great scene. You know, what I'm talking about. It's, no, mm -hmm. I've never yeah. seen him. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Oh, I've stop! Yeah, Get out of here! I, wait, how are you? How are you? A it's, superhero fan, card, and you've never man. seen the Blade, the Blade movies? I don't understand. I'm pulling you can your pull card. my card. That's fine, Father. I got bigger problems to worry about. You can. Oh <laughs> you can, man, you are fired. 
That's three. Just... I'm on fire. I'm on fire. That's three. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. No, I just they just came at a time where I was just like I think I was too young or I didn't care. And I've never really cared about Blade the character. Like he's They're great. They're they're they're, they're great. good movies. Yeah. I've heard the first two are great. I've heard the first the two. The third are one's great. great. Wait, is the third one with Ryan Reynolds? Yeah. Or is that two? That's the it's third one. And three, forgive, three. Me, forgive me. I misquoted. Yeah. That's from the third one. Third one. Yeah. Use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Use She's it. like, you know, crying because the, the mm-hmm. blind lady got killed, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, use it. Use it. Use it. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So we can end this part of the conversation with that is like, okay. because, you know, there is a certain, I would say, perfectionism and neuroses that come sometimes with fandom. Mm-hmm. And I've seen some people I love really f- fall pretty hard into it where it doesn't, it's not even fun anymore. They're constantly like, mm-hmm. memorizing facts. They're constantly like mm-hmm. trying to be um, like the person who knows the most about this thing. That's their identity. And I had this like real father turbo moment because I was trying to explain it to someone who's very near and dear to me. And I was trying to explain it to her. I was like, you know, I like rosemary, but rosemary is a spice. If you had a soup with nothing but rosemary in it, it would suck. That's the thing is when you allow your interests to define you, that's one like that's mm. what happens. There is a real you in that soup. And those little things that you like start to when they start to get out of order, that soup just becomes like a giant bowl of broth and rosemary and it sucks. It's not good. And why I'm saying this is because. I used to fall really hard into that trap and I was constantly living in fear of the day. Someone was trying to pull my card. Someone was trying to like challenge me and I didn't get a reference to something that I should. It's like, Oh, you're the comic book guy. You know, you're the, you know, whatever, whatever. And a long time ago, father and I were having a conversation and he said, he was like, kick it. And I was like, is that a song? (laughs) Yeah. Let's fight for your right by the beastie boys. And I was like, Oh, I was like, okay. And so that thing happened to me. That very Uh, thing I spent years dreading and it was not that bad. It was like, I felt shame. I felt bad. And now I wouldn't care. I would not even begin to care now. This was three kids ago. This is when I only had the one or the the one living with me. So I only had my little five-year-old with me. So yeah, it bothered me, but... Now I'm like, I don't even care. Like, whatever. This is something that was thrown into the ocean so long ago as the ship is sinking. Like, I just threw it so long ago. And that was something that was really important because, like, you know, um, I've seen where that goes, where it goes when people are 40, 50, 40, 45, 50. They're still doing it. And I'll just stop with this. I was shopping one time at a comic book store, and there's this guy, and he had gray in his hair. So I don't know how old he was, but he had some gray in his hair and he was buying that, um, the max, the comic book series, the max. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And he was like looking for it and he was like, oh yes. He was like, cool. He's like, I only have three more issues till I have the whole series and then I can read it. And I was like, you haven't read it. I was like, what are you? And I was like, it was like a ghost of Christmas future. And I was like, that could be me. Like, that could have been me. Like, I don't know if I'm properly conveying the neuroses I felt from this dude. But he was, like, just saying, I can't read it. I can't read it. I can't read it until I get all the issues, until I get all. Then I can understand the entire arc and its entire understanding. I'm not missing any emotional beat. I'm like, this is your problem. This is the thing. And, like, I get it. I'm not judging. Saying it's a ghost of Christmas future thing. I was like, that could have been Andrew. Had Christ not, you know, had Christ not, you know, brought me into the church, had I not had as many kids as I do, which, you know, still not that many, um, had I not had to start doing what I do for a career, I really, that could have been me. And like, it's chilling. It's like, oh man, it makes my stomach hurt thinking about it. So, you know, all that stuff, you know, like, oh, you know, paying attention to what's actually important. That was like a real sobering moment to me of being like, the only thing that gives any of this stuff meaning is Christ. He's the mm-hmm. only one that makes any of this stuff worthwhile. And if you don't have that, you're just going to end up in a state of neuroses. You're just going to mm-hmm. end up in a state of like constantly like, well, why is, is you're like beating it? 
Like you're like hitting it, like work, work again. Like, please work. Please make me feel good again. Please make me feel good again. And it's like, bro, it ain't going to happen because you've done nothing to like replenish it. You've done nothing to replenish your spirit. You you've already wasted your entire month of December feasting. The thing is here and you're not going to get that feeling back and whatever, whatever. So anyway, um, well, you guys, yeah, maybe unless you guys have something to say about that. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's our plug. So, the giving season is upon us. And we have, uh, for those not familiar, because I think we have quite a few more uh, mm-hmm. followers than we did last year. Um, I'm going to let Father talk about Mount Tabor. Because I think you could do a better job about it. It's a school that's associated with our parish. And right now... Uh, they're kind of doing a fundraiser. They're they're raising funds to kind of help with some of the expenses of the school. And take it away, Father. <laughs> Come on, you yeah, you so, you you've done more with less than what I just gave you. So sure. Well, Mount Tabor is our our school. It's a classical education school, a liberal arts school, Orthodox school, where we are working hard to form, you know, the souls of, of young people. And, you know, it's our way of, um, you know, in some sense, not just preserving, you know, a way of life and, and you know, introducing, you know, the way of Christ to our children, but um, to really kind of put a stake in the ground um, and um, provide, you know, a kind of icon, if you will, um, with the blessing, with God's help, um, of what we should be doing as as the Orthodox Church, because um, there's a great. Um, it's on his last reflection. I encourage anyone, if they're willing to, little shout out to Father Josiah on his channel, Patristic Nectar. Patristic Nectar um, just gave a little um, snippet on um, Orthodox schools, the future of Orthodoxy. Um, and they are because orthodoxy, you know, like we were talking about earlier, it isn't just about kind of getting the um, the nuts and bolts of, you know, timelines and history, but it's about inculcating, you know, the life of Christ in the heart of of young souls, um, and that's where, you know. The Lord tarries. That's the future of the church. The future of the church is not in um, the kind of evangelism that we were talking about. I think in the earlier of the conversation, the future is 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 in raising children that are actually orthodox in their worldview, their paradigm, their being, giving them the means to really encounter the life of Christ. And so that's what we do at, at Mount Tabor. Um, you know, the liturgy every Wednesday is part of it. The common arts days in which they are learning how to, you know, farm and the nuts and bolts of running a business of sewing, of doing crafts, of being with monastics, of being together, you know, not just reading and learning from, you know, the great books and the great, um, you know, all the great philosophers and the great fathers of the church, but actual incarnational experience, you know, everything from prospera making, um, to some ballet, to chopping wood, you know. Um, so we do all this, um, but it, you know, it's at that time where it's it's expensive. And if anyone's willing to, um, you know, donate to help fund um, the, you know, the, a scholarship for a kid, that would be a real blessing. And I want to encourage anyone, if you're interested in, in starting something. If you're interested in really what it would look like to have an Orthodox school, I'd encourage you to go to the website, um, check out um, our promotional video there, and then, you know, contact our headmaster, um, Adam Lockridge, um, and really start speaking and dialoguing with him um, because he's working hard also on getting um, the word out and, you know, sharing our experience of the hurdles of doing this and, you um, hopefully inspiring people and making a pathway for them to, to do the same in their community, because this is the future of the church. You know um, we have to, you know, you got to keep building your arc 
and your arc is your community, your parish, and this is the other part of it is if you don't have kids, you know, if your parish ain't crying, it's dying. Mm. And you got to mm. have a means by which you're you're passing on the life to to the children and the orthodox school is like the way um that's the next step and that's the future. So that's what we're doing and that's what um you know we're we're asking for a little bit of help on during this um fund this St. Nicholas fundraiser. Yeah. Yeah. Links in, links in the description. Links in no the description. Matter where you're, no matter where you're listening. Yeah. And yeah, it that promotional video it's it's a it's a good one. It's a good one. So um yeah, it's a great school. I mean, I I've I've witnessed the the fruits of it already so far. It's incredible. Even talking with the teens, you know, who've attended, you know, I'm like, "You're reading that? Like that's incredible. Like you're doing this? Like that's incredible. I wish someone would have done that." And you know, just that Wednesday liturgy alone is incredible. So um so anyway uh yeah please check that out uh otherwise we have a playlist royal path uh podcast playlist on spotify which hazel's on there it's official um uh the new uh christmas song uh also if you're looking to reach out a couple people have reached out about texting and i think i've gotten most of you um there's one guy i can't get on signal yet but that's okay we'll work it out if, you, if you're interested uh, reach out to me at andrew at royal path dot network uh then but general questions uh contact at royal path dot network um a lot of people still reach out to me with questions and that's fine you can do that but most of the time we're just going to forward them to father anyway which is what going to be contact at royal path dot network we have someone who does that actively instead of very passively like me so you know if you want to do it and then wait like a month for a response hit up andrew at royal path dot network um also uh thank you jack your um your thumbnails are incredible uh again like you've really hit in a stride uh last like 10 ones i'm like that's it that's exactly it that's you've nailed it um i think uh we also have merch uh royalpath.store um and i think atlantis will rise is on there yeah atlantis will rise on there i think it's been on there actually for a little while um and we don't see any of that money that goes to the parish or to uh the people who make the merch and i think that that is it thank you for having a good night bye-bye